I'm almost 100% sure that I was going to get the question of why am I reviewing this when this game came out ages ago, but the simple fact is it just came out on the Xbox One and the PS4, and guess what I played it on? The Xbox One and PS4. So that means I'm going to review it for the Xbox One and PS4. And what is Banner Saga? Well, it's a turn-based strategy type game. Think more like Final Fantasy Tactics or Front Mission, where you move your guys in little, little squares around the board and try to outmaneuver other enemies. But is it any good? We're going to find out right now. Which One of the best parts about this game is the choices. Let's talk about the story. The story is two different characters or groups of uh, people, and uh, they're called Veal, these, these huge giants. Um, and they, they take place on kind of separate um, stories that come together in the end. And what I really enjoyed is that the choices in this game actually matter. So when you actually pick a choice where you're like, should you jump and grab the cart or not, that can result in a character's death. And not just some flimsy uh, whatever character, an actual main character on your team that dies forever and no going back, you cannot reset. I love that fact that every choice that I'm making makes me actually think because it will change the outcome. And even such as having a character in your party that can literally kill major characters later on and you had no clue but you made that choice because you thought it was good. That is actually awesome choices that matter in a video game. And the story itself is pretty solid throughout. Also, visually, it's just a fun game to look at. It's pretty, the characters always are moving, even when they get hit, they kind of stumble down on the floor and pick up their weapon again. Stuff like that is not only nice to see, because you, you, know, you want to feel the emotion of these characters fighting, but at the same time, it's visually very nice. The atmosphere, it's very snowy, it's very cold, and everybody always looks like they're barely surviving, and I really enjoyed that. Also, the length and the different outcomes. Like I said in the beginning, the outcomes and changing them really is a cool thing. So I just wanted to reinforce that there. But the length in this game, because if you're going to play through it twice or even three times to get the different outcomes, it is a pretty lengthy game. The first playthrough took me about 15, 20 hours. So that's pretty good in my opinion. I did do some extra stuff in it and did some battles that I probably did in a little bit of training. But overall, the length itself is pretty dang good. Also... The gameplay is pretty decent. It works well. You can move your characters around. There's no annoyingness when you're doing it. So overall, the gameplay is solid enough where I can't think of anything bad. But that comes to the bad. Well, the gameplay isn't bad in any way. It definitely feels more basic than it should. I felt like we could have advanced the gameplay in this one alone. It, it feels like this is a uh, just a blueprint of what the gameplay could be and all the different classes in this game really don't have a major difference other than their special attack and that kind of really took it out for me also one of the things i really didn't like is that there's not any voice acting or very little and i wanted a lot more because the voice acting is pretty solid in this game i get that it's a small budget game and hopefully in two we get a lot more voice acting but i felt like it could have made some of these choices and moments really stand out and last but not least, it's slower paced than you want, might expect. Sometimes you go maybe 20, 30 minutes without fighting. And while that could be really cool in my opinion, sometimes it gets a little irritating to read through dialogue, which would the voice acting come in handy. Also, I really did uh, enjoy the gameplay, but it can get repetitive doing the same thing over and over and over again at not a Super Saiyan pace. Uh, they really had to add a fast forward button in this game. Which final man so it sounds like I have problems with Banner Saga, and I do, but on the core of it, it is a very unique game. There's not a lot like it, and the story actually made me feel emotionally uh, connected to these characters because every choice I made could spell their death, and that's scary. So I really did love the story aspect of this game and I enjoyed looking at the game and I really did like that I paid 20 bucks and I felt like I got 20 hours worth of gameplay on this flip side I thought the gameplay was starting to get a little bit repetitive and I feel like there could have been more to it so hopefully in two we see that but overall should you pick up Banner Saga well if you're a fan base uh sorry 
turn-based fan, if you like uh, stories that actually matter based on your choices, and you don't mind a little bit of a slower-paced gameplay, check this game out. I think you really enjoy it. So I'm going to give this a nice, good score. It's 7.5, the first game I played this year, and I have to say, starting off with a pretty decent game is a nice thing. <laughs>